Join me in prayer, please. Dear Lord, as we come before you this morning, we uh, pray, Lord, your blessings upon us. We pray, as always, with an attitude of gratitude, thankful for the things that we continue to receive on a daily basis. We uh, pray, Lord, for our families. We pray for Epi. May he be safe wherever he, in the world he is and today, whatever his activities are. Uh, we pray for the people of Israel. We ask, Lord, that you would grant peace to the Middle East part of the world. We also, Lord, continue to pray for uh, Claudio and Rosella, Odie, Kelly, and Jim Willis. And we ask, Lord, that you look down upon these people have them be restored to your well-being. Grant us each strength and help us to grow in thy will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Open your Bibles, please, to Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. Matthew was chapter gonna... 13, verse 33. Are we still going to be in parables? We are. Vanessa? Sir, Matthew 13, verse 33 says, Yes, please. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and, and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leaven. Okay, leaven. The word there is leaven, leaven. by the way. Mm, okay. Leaven. And what is that referring to when it says leaven? Yes. Yeast, very good. That's what it is. Now, this is actually, it's one verse, and um, there are a number of controversies that surround this verse. So I'm going to ask you some questions, and then I'm going to try to provide you with both answers to them, okay? Uh, what do you think is the background uh, to this particular parable? About the yeast? Yes. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it were all to the dough. The kingdom of heaven. I think, does it mean that the yeast are the people uh, wait, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. I don't get it. Because I know the yeast are powdered. Okay? Yes, and it spreads and throughout then, the dough, right? And you spread it uh, around the dough so that it will pop up and, and be uh, puffy. Right. But it says the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. So... The kingdom of heaven will pop up or will give it will it, it might be added kind of... to the world. Uh Miss Vanessa, what is your what do you read? I think sir, if as what Mam Cora said, it 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 begins in the flower, sir, diba? And then when it's flower, you have to put water and then you have to make bread and then you need to have uh, one by one, sir, until it becomes bread. And then. Okay. It, by the it, way, Mary Faye, we're in Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. You have to make it um, one by one and then it will become bread and then you can have it. Okay. What did Jesus Christ say that the kingdom of heaven was like? It's like say it again. What did Jesus said about the kingdom of heaven? Yes. It's like Yes, what it says. It's in the text. Yeah, I know. That's why it's, I'm it's like a yeast, sir. Very it's good. Like... It's like eleven, right? Mm. Yeah, it's like a yeast. Okay. How does leaven work? That's what I said. You spread it on the dough. Mm, you have to mix so it. That the yeast. Uh, 
The purpose of these is to pop the dough. Okay. Well, let me tell you what I'm going to walk you through here. And we have uh, two commentators who happen to disagree with the gentleman who wrote the, our study material. Okay. Uh, one of those will be Burton Kaufman, and we will start with Burton Kaufman's commentary. There's, according to Burton Kaufman, there's a long list of expositors who make the leaven in this parable something evil, and the parable itself a prophecy of the ultimate corruption of the church during what is known as the great apostasy. Based on their claims that the leaven is almost always used in scripture to represent something bad. Bad? Bad. Therefore, the Israelites were commanded to purge out the old leaven during the Passover. And uh -huh. the disciples... Go ahead. Uh, no, sir. Okay. And the disciples were warned by Jesus Christ against the leaven of the Pharisees. Now, all these considerations could be rejected in the light of Christ's word that the kingdom of heaven is like leaven. We have to understand that the figures in the Bible are not so stereotyped, that symbols must invariably follow common patterns. It does seem bold and startling that Christ in this parable would invert or reverse the usual meaning of the leaven and make it something good, holy, and desirable. However, another example of this same reversal is seen in the fact that Christ is a lion. Revelations chapter 5 and verse 5. Revelations chapter 5 and verse 5. Mary Faye. Revelations chapter 5 and verse 5 says, Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Okay. So the lion is who in Revelations 5, 5? The lion is Jesus. Jesus, right? The lion of Judah, right? Now, let's take a look also at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Marvin, you with us? Good morning. Good morning, sir. You want to read that one, Marvin? What's the chapter again? 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Okay. First Peter chapter five verse eight it says here be alert and of sober mind your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Okay. Now we do understand that symbolism is used within scripture. However, Marvin just told us who is the lion in first Peter chapter five verse eight. The devil. The, the devil, the right? Devil. But in Revelations 5.5, 5, who's the lion? Jesus. Jesus. Which one is good? Or are they both good? Both. Say that again. Jesus. Both Jesus Christ and Satan are good? No, Jesus. right, Mary Faye? Yes. Okay. Which one is good? Jesus the Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Which one is not good? The devil. But Satan. in scripture, they are both referred to as? A lion. A lion. Okay. So when we look at the parable of the mustard seed, uh, we might be able to take some meaning that demerit the birds because they really 
form no essential part of a mustard seed, and they don't. But in this parable, the leaven becomes part of the whole, which scripture tells us is three measures of meal. Therefore, if we construe leaven as evil, it would be to make the prophecy complete, final and total corruption of the church itself, which cannot be. The church cannot be totally corrupted. Do you know why? Miss Vanessa, they're going to need some help. How about helping them from Matthew chapter 16, verse 18? Matthew 16, verse 18 says, And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So if we say that the leaven is sin, the leaven is the leaven of the Pharisees, and then we contend that the church will become entirely corrupted. What happens to the prophecy from Matthew chapter 16, verse 18? It becomes untrue, right? You try. Is everybody tracking me so far? Or did I lose you guys? But it cannot be untrue because you said the Bible doesn't contradict its, its verses. Very good, sweetheart. And 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 still applies, right? All scripture is God's breath. Keep going, Vanessa. And Without it's turning just, your pages. <laughs> and it's just for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped in every good work. May be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work right marvin yes, sir. so yes, sir. before we start automatically assigning leaven as something evil we have to be aware that scripture also applies now one difference between the short parables hold on i just got something happened here with my computer is that the parable of the mustard seed uh, one the two parables, the mustard seed and the leaven, is that the man sowed the mustard seed in a field. However, it was a woman who took and had, hid the leaven in the meal. Why do you think it was a man in one and a woman in another? Mm -hmm. Why do you think? Anybody? Is it in Revelation 5? Is no. that the woman? No. The woman is in the parable of the mustard, uh, in the parable of the leaven, which we just read. And the parable of the mustard seed, which we studied, studied a few weeks ago, it was a man who planted the mustard seed. Why do you think one was a man and the other was a woman? Come on, guys. Okay, stop. Just think for a minute. If I told you somebody went to plant a crop, would it probably be a man or a woman? If somebody would what? Plant Planting crop. a crop. Uh, a mustard it's seed. It's supposed that, to be women. That's a, supposed to be a guy. Planting? Planting, yes. Farmers. Mm -hmm. Now, oh. if I tell you it was somebody pre preparing some dough to bake, who might that be? Women. <laughs> what did you say, Mary Faye? Oh, women, because it's about making food. <laughs> so it's not a big deal 
it's just we need to be aware. Why was one a man, one was a woman? Because within the culture at that time, the planting was done by the men and the cooking was done by women. Women. That's not unusual. Uh, many of the ancient commentators dating back to what are known as the uh, anti-Nicene, A-N-T-E, meaning before, anti-Nicene, uh, commentators uh, they see the three measures of meal representing the three dispensations of God's grace uh, they may see something related to the racial composition of the human family and that Shem, Ham and Jepheth were three different the fathers of the three different or three major races uh, maybe the threefold nature of man related to spirit, body, and soul. However, I honestly can tell you that most of these deductions appear too speculative, too speculative, too much of a guess. And it's much easier, and it's as likely true, that the three measures were mentioned only because that's usually the amount that a woman would take on an ordinary occasion. It's what happens is people try to write too much into the details. Now, it appears that the following analogies are valid. The leaven or the yeast represents the kingdom of heaven and its influence. The leaven imparts its character to the whole loaf. The church changes the character of the people influenced by the church. The leaven rises silently, which suggests the matter of the church growth. A little leaven is capable, given time, of leavening a vast amount of dough. And the influence of the church has become and will become extensively wide and cover most of society. And the woman in the parable may not be important, but she probably or may represent the church. That's Burton Kaufman's opinion. And then there's a an opinion by, there's a, a different opinion. How am I doing on time? I'm, I'm, we're going to go back and uh, take a look at the other side of this argument. Uh, Exel is another commentator that I currently refer to. Uh, he has a different opinion. Now, the author of the material that we're using for study, he disagrees with them. So let's take a look at some of the text that goes with it. Uh, Luke chapter 12 and verse 1. Luke chapter 12 and verse 1. And Cora, I think it's your read. Luke chapter 12, verse 1. Yes, please. It says, Meanwhile, when a crowd of many thousands had gathered, so they were, so that they were trampling on one another, Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, saying, Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. So, now, can we understand where it looks like Luke chapter 12, verse 1, the leaven is referencing something that is undesirable. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And uh, let's take a look at Luke chapter 13, verse 20, please, Mary Faye. Luke chapter 13, verse 20. Luke chapter 13, verse 20. Again, he asked, what shall I compare the kingdom of God to? Okay. And 21, please, Marvin. 21. It is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it breaks all through the dough. Okay. So what we see is the scripture in Luke is... 
a parallel to the one that we saw in Matthew, correct? Yes. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16 and start us in verse 12, please, Vanessa. Matthew chapter 16, start us in verse 5, please, Vanessa, sorry. Matthew chapter 16, verse 5 says, When the disciples reached the other side, they had forgotten to bring any bread. Whoops. Verse 6, please, Cora. Verse 6, it says, Be careful, Jesus said to them, Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Sadducees. Okay. Uh, Sadducees, right? Verse 7, please, Mary Faye. Verse 7, they discussed this among themselves and said, it is because we didn't bring any bread. Eight, please, Marvin. Eight, aware of their discussion, Jesus asked, you of a little feet, why are you talking among yourselves about having no bread? Okay. Nine, please, Vanessa. And nine, do you know not yet Perceive, do you not remember the five loaves for the five thousands and how many baskets you gathered? Okay, verse 10, Cora. Oh, look. Yes. I'm sorry, I, <laughs> I put no. my... Yeah, Matthew Luke memory. chapter... Uh, Matthew. Sorry, Matthew chapter 16, verse 10, sweetheart. And then I'm then... <clears throat> Sorry, because I, then it says, thir... Matthew 13, 10, he replied, because of the knowledge of the secret of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. 11, please, Mary Faye. That's 11. I, sorry. Okay. 11. How is it you don't understand that I was not talking to you about bread, but be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees? Okay. And 12, please, Marvin. Verse 12, then they understood that he was not telling them to guard against the yeast used in bread, but against the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Okay. So what do we see in Matthew, what do we see in Matthew chapter 16? Is the yeast referring to something positive or something negative? It is something negative. It is something negative, right? Um, actually, somebody give it to me. Mark chapter 7, verse 7. In vain. Very me. good. Go ahead, Mary Faye. In vain do they worship me. Uh, I, I, I can't. <laughs> Your teaching is saying a mere human. What's that, sweetheart? In vain do they worship me. Their teachings are merely human rules. Okay. So we want to be careful about that, right? But at the same time, we don't want to overstretch what Scripture says. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Another long read. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Apparently the dogs see somebody. Do you guys hear my doggies? Whose read is it? Me, sir. 5 verse... What? 1. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 says... It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you of and of a kind that is that is not tolerated even among pagans for a man has his father's wife. Now, do you understand what was just what Paul just told the Corinthian church? There is Sexual immorality. Here. What is the sexual immorality that, ex that exists in the church at Corinth according to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1? Incest. Say that again? Incest. 
Uh, close. A man is sleeping with his mother, his stepmother. And that's not even tolerated amongst the pagans. Go ahead and give us 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2, Cora. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2. Yes, please. It says, and you, and you are proud. Shouldn't you rather have gone into mourning and have put all of your relationship, the man who had been doing this? Okay, verse three, please, Mary Faye. Verse three says, for my part, even though I am not physically present, I am with you in spirit. As one who is present with you in this way, I have already passed judgment in the name of our Lord Jesus on the one who has been doing it. Okay, verse four, please, Marvin. Verse four, so when you are assembled and I am with you in spirit and the power of the, our Lord Jesus is present. Okay, verse five, Vanessa. And five, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Okay. Six, please, Cora. Verse six, it says, your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens, leavens. The, leavens the whole batch of dough? Seven, please, Mary Faye. Seven, get rid of the old yeast so that you may be a new unleavened batch as you really are. For Christ, our past over our past over lamb has been sacrificed. Okay, eight, please, Marvin. Therefore, let us keep the festival not with the old bread leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Okay. Nine, please, Vanessa. And nine, I wrote to you in my letter. Not to associate with sexual immoral people. Okay. Ten, please, Cora. Ten, not, not at all meaning the people of this world who is who are immoral or the greedy and the swindlers or adulterers, that in that case you would have to leave the world, this world. Eleven, please, Mary Faye. Eleven. But now I am writing to you that you must not associate with anyone who claims to be a brother or sister, but is sexually immoral or greedy, an idolater or slanderer, or drunkard or swindler. Do not even eat with such people. Okay, 12, please, Marvin. What business is it of mine to, to judge those outside the church? Are you not to judge those inside? Okay, 13, please, Vanessa. And 13, God judges those outside. Purge the evil person from among you. Okay. So if we use 1 Corinthians chapter 5 as our proof text, Leaven looks evil, right? Get it out of the body. Get it out of the church. And we're going to stop this commentary on Galatians chapter 5 and verse 9, Cora. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 9. 5, 9. Galatians chapter 5, verse 9. It says... A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. A little yeast leavens the whole batch, right? Mm -hmm. Now, understand this is where we run into difficulties is because I bet nobody who thought we were going to have this was going to be a verse that turned into an hour long study. However, when we look at the parable of the leaven, and the parallel passage that we see in Luke chapter 13. The, <laughs> the growth of the kingdom is regarded in as quiet 
and really secret influence. This will be ultimately complete and universal. The prophecy is fulfilled with every recognition of a Christian principle in public opinion, in customs, or in law. Or let's take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Mary Fay. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So we as the church are promoting obedience to God, right? Uh, so what we see here is that this is... All thoughts will be captive to Christ. It's not that the leaven is evil is going to take over the church. Um, this is the only passage, really, though. Matthew chapter 13, verse 33, is where leaven is spoken of with reverence to its permeating qualities without any trace of defilement, uh, which the Levitical law, strongly forbids exodus chapter 12 verse 15 exodus chapter 12 verse 15 marvin so 15 exodus chapter 12 verse 15 it says here for seven days you are to eat bread made without yeast on the first day remove the yeast from your houses for whoever eats anything with yeast in it from the first day through the seventh must be cut off from Israel. Okay. Exodus chapter 23, verse 18, please, Vanessa. Exodus chapter 23, verse what, sir? 18. 18. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with anything leaven, or or let the fat of my feast remain un, in, until the morning. Okay. Uh, what we see here is that leaven is instructed to be taken out of the house okay. in the Levitical law. We already looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6, where it tells us, do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole dough? Galatians chapter 5 and verse 9, Cora just read for us, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Um, now, there is a connotation of evil that is not altogether absent. However, it is used as a evil impulse that is within us do you have an impulse to commit sin well i do i think all of us have um and i think it should be interpreted the same or similar here uh, we have to understand that our lord is actually referring to the spread of christianity not the spread of worldliness now there are those uh, that hold that this was the great apostasy of the church that occurred, uh, especially after the conversion of Constantine. However, this is opposed to the prima facie, or meaning at face value, the prima facie meaning of the scripture. And it's unreasonable, I, in my opinion, to uh, insist that a symbol always have to have the same meaning. And it's really opposed to the idea of the deliberate purpose underlying the actions of the woman. Uh, the closing words also cast a shadow because they would mean that Christianity 
fails. Now, the woman here probably belongs entirely to the framework of the principle. We can see that in Luke chapter 15, verse 4. Luke chapter 15, verse 4, Cora. Luke 15, chapter 4. <clears throat> yes, please. It says, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and losses, losses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? Okay. Uh, you got to go find that one, right? So mm -hmm. what we see is the work that's described is whether it's a man or a woman. Who was the shepherd in Luke chapter 15, verse 4, Cora? Was it a man or a woman? A man. Okay. And that's kind of why I think the woman that was described as mixing the dough. Um, other interpretation sees in this woman the church as the agent by whom the kingdom of God is brought to its best. Uh, the We spoke about, from uh, Burton Kaufman's commentary, we spoke about uh, the three measures and the possible meanings with that. However, I still believe that three measures is about the amount of dough that a woman would need at one time. K-N-E-A-D, not N-E-E-D, need. Um, give me Genesis chapter 18 and verse 6. Genesis chapter 18 and verse 6. Mary Faye? Genesis chapter 18 verse 6. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three C's. Is it C's? Three. Get three C's. C's? Yeah, S-E-A-H, -S -E C's, yes. Get three C's of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Okay, so is there anything within that scripture we used three, and that is the amount that she was kneading? K-N-E-A-D, not N-E-E-D. There's nothing special about the number three there. And I don't think we should attach it to the number three in the Matthew chapter 13 scripture. Uh, give me Judges chapter six and verse 19, please. Marvin. All done, sir. What chapter again, sir? And verse? Judges 619. 619. Judges chapter 6, verse 19. It says here, Gideon went inside, prepared a young goat, and from an ephah Epa, of flour, yes. ephah, and from an ephah of flour, he made a bread without yeast, putting the meat in a basket and its broth in a pot, he brought them out and offered them to him under the oak. Okay. Nothing special symbolically there. It's a, it, there's a good lesson for us, but that's not what today's lesson is. Um, until the When it says until the whole was leavened, literally in Greek, it says until it was leavened. And I will spare you my bad Greek today. Um uh, while our Lord promises that the permeated influence of the kingdom of heaven will at last be entirely successful, I think it's unfair to try to press this parable to deduct that the world as such will gradually and continually fall into sin. Uh, if you go back and look, this is here. Let's take a second. I'm going to ask this question. Do you think people are better today than they were 2,000 years ago at the time of Christ? In what way, sir? Morally. Morally, well, still corrupt. <laughs> 
Uh, are they more corrupt, less corrupt, or about the same? About the same. Okay, Marvin? What's the question again, sir? If you compare the people today to the people at the time of Jesus Christ, roughly 2,000 years ago, are people today mm -hmm. more morally corrupt, less morally corrupt, or about the same? About the same, sir. Okay. What do you think, Vanessa? Yes, sir. About the same because, you know, before there's corrupt, today still <laughs> lots of corrupt people, sir. Okay. What do you think, Cora? <laughs> Sweetheart. It's both, although it's different in different in in a way they do it or in a manner it's been done. Choppy, try it again. Hello. She just fell off. You, you come back to the meeting, sweetheart. All right, I'm back. Okay. I said I think it's almost the same, although it, it has a different uh different way of doing it or the different characteristic of people <clears throat> meaning Explain. meaning during that time or let's say our time it's corrupt and it's in it and it helps that the, the technology helps it it's more fast more fast corruption uh it affects a lot of people in in terms of corruption uh, in return, during those days, <clears throat> people are more slow, um, lay back. They do corrupt. They do. They they are corrupt as well, but in a different way. They're more less probably. Um, less vivid about what they're doing or. As, as I've said, it's a little bit finesse, although there's a corruption. Nowadays, it doesn't matter. It's corrupt. It's just a, one additional thing that we're doing. It We make it normal. Okay. So, yeah, do me a favor. What? Read Genesis chapter 16, verse 5. 16.5? Yes, please. It says... Then Sarai said to Abraham, Abram, you are responsible for the wrong I am suffering. I'm sorry, but six five. Six oh, five. Six, Genesis chapter six, verse five. Yes. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth. And that every inclination of the thoughts of the human hearts was only evil all the time. So go ahead. How were things during the time of Noah? Every thought all the time was only evil. Evil, evil at, at, at the same, at all the time. Okay. I think people are a little bit better than that. I'm not going to say a lot better, but well, be, be, maybe before they they use those axe and those sword. Now nowadays we use sh shotgun, rifle, bomb, evolving. Okay, but yes, And I think we have just about exhausted our one verse of our scripture today, our one verse parable. Let's go back over the questions, see if we anybody can give me your own opinion. In your opinion, what? how does the leaven work? Miss Vanessa? Need, needs time, sir. 
the work. Okay. Mary Faye, in your opinion, what does the leaven represent? The leaven represents, as we read earlier, um, it is um, the uh, wrong teachings, the corrupt things that is mixed in our Christianity. That is one of the opinions. Cora, in your opinion, what does the leaven represent? You're muted, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. my, my dog is very noisy. Uh, in my opinion, based from the from the from Matthew thirteen thirty one, seems like um it's supposed to be just like the kingdom of heaven. It's supposed to it's supposed okay. I said suppose. Um, it should be, uh some kind of um strength or or liveliness within the christianity okay marvin in your opinion what does the leaven represent uh i would relate the leaven to our heart because i think leaven is a factor or a force to which um Full, uh, fill our hearts with darkness slowly or little by little without uh, knowing it or without uh, without being aware that we are becoming something worse than we are yesterday. Okay. Vanessa? Uh, sir, we need to at least um, nurture ourselves in words as what Sir Chris yesterday mentioned, every every uh, single I mean small space in our heart uh, that used to put if we forgot to to understand or we forgot to pray, and then the devil was wanted to attack attack our mind and and our heart, sir, and then. We didn't notice that we are all already do something wrong against against God. Okay. Uh, as I tried to explain during this class, there are two views of the leaven. One is sin that encroaches in the church and therefore pollutes the church and stops it from its ultimate goal, which, as we already read, this is my I this is my on this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So I'm pretty sure that it's not sin within the church. I think the parallel that Jesus Christ is drawing is more related to the church within society as a whole. And Mary Faye will let you go last. I was getting ready to call you on another one here. Uh, but we'll let Cora start us off. Uh, what does the woman represent? In your opinion, what does the woman represent? Uh, I don't know. Mankind? Because the men represent also mankind. And the woman represent mankind. So, Okay. Marvin? I think the woman serve as a support for men as um as we talked earlier, uh the man is the one who's doing planting and the woman is the one who's doing cooking. Therefore, for the man to be able to sustain or to be able to continue planting, uh he, he needs the support of his wife for him to be able to do so. Very good. Good answer. Vanessa? Yes, sir. Um, the the woman have to be submissive to to his husband, sir. And then we we're always here, sir, to support. And what okay. what the husband is doing, where we will support, sir. All right, Mary Faye. Uh, I think I 
I'm agreeing with that teacher, Cora, that a woman represents us as well. Or if we're comparing it to the sower, it could be Jesus as well. Maybe. Uh, I don't know that it has any special meaning to it other mm. than the fact that it was the woman doing the baking. And at that particular time, if you had talked about a man preparing the flour, they would have wondered, what man? Men don't do that. Right, sweetheart? Yeah. Okay. Uh, why do you think leaven is an appropriate symbol for both sin in the church and church and the church in the society. Why do you think leaven is what? Is a proper symbol for proper both symbol. sin in the church and the church in society. Maybe because the leaven represent uh, evil and good, or good and evil. Okay, Marvin? I'll think about it first, sir. Okay. Miss Vanessa? Uh, we have to uh to ha you have to avoid sir sin i think so okay. because leaven represents sin in our tackling in our discussion sir it can it mm. uh, it can yes we we were very clear about that first corinthians chapter 5 makes that exceedingly plain that leaven may represent sin in the body of christ however as I explained, other commentators believe that it represents the church in society as a whole. How might Levin represent both of those, Mary Faye? In the church? Well, it could be because um, if we're referring it to sin, like if you mix Levin to something, it will multiply it. It does, like, doesn't it? It will multiply. So if the sin is going to be mixed into the uh, Christian, like a lot of uh, people who is not um, aware will do more sin as well. So the sin will spread. But if uh, like a whole, like the church as a whole in uh, society, if it is compared as a good one, yes, Christianity will also multiply as a good one. Very good. 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 Mm -hmm. Very good. That's the answer I was looking for, Mary Faye. It means it means based on evil and based on good too. So meaning mm -hmm. you spread good or you spread evil. And uh, we depends. let's uh I think we're out of time. Let's all go forth and spread good. Don't go anywhere, guys.